good afternoon to everyone i welcome all of you to the 48th lecture in the lecture series in nonlinear dynamics conducted by the department of nonlinear dynamics bharti dasan university with a support from rusa 2.0 i am happy to introduce today's speaker dr nitu kumari dr nitu kumari obtained her phd degree in applied mathematics from indian school of mines tanbar in the year 2009 she joined as an assistant professor in iit mandi in the year 2010 and elevated to associate professor in the year 2019 he has been a visiting senior scientist for a year in clarkson university united states of america in recognition of her studies dr nitu kumari won several fellowships honors and awards she won national doctor fellowship awarded by all india council for technical education government of india she has been qualified jharkhand public service examination in the year 2007 with a merit position first in jharkhand state she has also been awarded raman fellowship by ugc in the year 2013 and 14 dr kumari's expertise covers differential equations dynamical systems and modeling nonlinear phenomena currently five students are carrying out phd under her guidance she has published several articles in modeling infectious diseases environmental pollution and so on she has been a reviewer in several journals on nonlinear dynamics when i contacted dr kumari about the possibility to deliver a lecture in the forum she immediately accepted thank you madam dr nitu kumari has delivered lectures in several conferences workshops in in and abroad today she is going to talk on the topic role of group difference on pattern formation analysis in a tritropic food chain model with this short introduction now i invite dr nitu kumari to deliver her lecture or to you madam thank you very much uh, professor santivalan i actually appreciate the introduction that you have given and i would also like to thank you for giving me this opportunity for giving an invitation uh, to share my research uh, with you and in particularly with the students of your university i'm actually uh, really thankful okay so without wasting even a single minute i think i should move to my presentation uh, so in this presentation i'll be talking about the role of uh, the group defense in uh, the population on the pattern formation as well as on the nonlinear dynamics of the of the uh, ecosystem so in particular we uh, see very often that there is a, a tendency of group defense in the population but we have there has been very less studies where this has been uh, investigated that how this group difference actually affects the nonlinear dynamics of the model system or in general its distribution in the uh, space which uh, we are actually characterizing mathematically as pattern formation okay so in this talk uh, initially i'll be talking about few of the fundamentals uh, particularly uh, keeping in view the msc students who are uh, also the audience and then uh, the fundamentals of the population dynamics and the uh, motivation behind this particular problem and then i'll move to the formulation of the model system further uh, once the model formation is clear we'll be talking about various uh, theorems that we have established for this particular mathematical model and uh, then we have validated these analytical results using the numerical uh, techniques or numerical simulations and finally we'll conclude this talk so to start with i'll uh, talk, talk about one of the very uh, basic models that was uh, introduced in the population dynamics which was also uh, uh, called as malthusian model by his name t r malthus so this particular model was proposed in 1798 and it was a uh, very popular then also known as exponential model so in this particular model the per capita growth rate of the population uh, the individuals that we have considered n n is total number of individuals in a given population so the its per capita growth rate is determined by the difference between the per capita birth rate minus the per capita death rate of the population so basically this uh, difference of this per capita birth rate and the per capita death, the death rate of any population is also known as its intrinsic growth rate r so uh, uh, we can see here that when this happens 
1 upon n d and dt equal to b minus d, this particular model has a solution which is actually exponential in nature. So whenever your r, that is the intrinsic growth rate, whenever this is positive, there is an exponential growth in the population. And whenever this r is less than 0, then we see a exponential decay in the population. So this was one of the very basic uh, models. Uh, and also it was very popular then when actually another uh, researcher in the area, P.F. Verhulst, uh, came and he gave uh, another model, which is known as verhulst pearl logistic model. Or simply, this is also popularly these days known as logistic model. So what happens in this uh, logistic model is that here the uh, per capita growth rate of the population is actually defined by uh, this particular term. So here this new term k comes into picture, which is nothing but the carrying capacity of the uh, population. So what is carrying capacity? So whenever the, uh, the population reaches to its maximum value, uh, due to the uh, limited resources of the system, this is the carrying capacity of the given system. So here we see that the growth rate of the population actually uh, is proportional to the quadratic uh, growth in the population, n squared. And we also see here that uh, the solution of this particular model takes form something like this. So this is another, uh, 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 this was another very popular model in the, in the case of single species. Now, uh, these uh, single species model are uh, were used to understand the dynamics of the ecosystem or any, uh, uh, for that matter, any ecological system. Uh, so we can actually in incorporate or uh, involve other ecological parameters that might affect the growth of the population. One such uh, ecological factor is the alley effect. So what is actually alley effect? Uh, you must have seen in uh, many of the uh, places we incorporate the alley effect, but what actually it is. So it is the property where we see a direct correlation between the population density and the population growth. So many a times this happens, uh, we see that whenever the number of individuals in a given population, it is uh, very high, then we, uh, we see that there is a decline in the population may be due to the limited uh, availability of the limited resources. However, uh, this can also happen that whenever your population has low number, uh, population has low, less number of individuals, that can also cause decline in the population. And that happens because of the uh, decreased rate of uh, reproduction. So that particular phenomenon is termed as alley effect. So here uh, in this single uh, species mathematical model, the alley effect can be incorporated something like this. So here this K0, this uh, term K0 actually is the alley effect threshold. So if this particular threshold uh, is uh, crossed, only then the uh, population would grow uh, smoothly. So this is your model with the alley effect. Now, uh, these are some of the uh, ways by which a single species model are being studied in the population dynamics. Coming to, so as we, when, as and when we see the ecosystem, it's not about just one population, rather there are more than one population that comes into picture. And in order to understand how a particular population uh, or individuals in a given population grows, so for that we have to understand how they interact with the other uh, population. So uh, one of the basic models in the two species uh, model, uh, two species system was the Lotka Voldera model. Uh, which was proposed by Lotka in 1925 independently and then further 1926 uh, it was proposed by Voldera. And that's why since it was uh, proposed simultaneously, it's known as Lotka Voldera model. So uh, this Lotka Voldera model actually, here the growth of the prey and the, so here the first population P is known as the prey population and Z is the predator population. So this the density of the prey and predator population, its growth actually follows a simple oscillation. And uh, the amplitude of that oscillation remains unaffected by the biology of the system. So this was one of the deep rates of the Lotka-Voltra model. 
So here, uh, as we can see, uh, neither the prey nor the predator population inhibits its own rate of growth. So here we can see this A1P denotes the uh, growth of the prey and uh, there is no role of the predator here. Then this minus B1ZP actually, here comes the predator. Uh, so this predator eats upon the prey and which causes a decline in the prey population. And minus A2Z is the decline in the uh, predator population in the absence of its prey. And B2PZ actually denotes the uh, conversion of the prey population into the uh, predator population. So this was uh, one of the models, basic models. Later came another model uh, that, that was Leslie Gore model, which actually, so this uh, was a positive uh, improvement to the previous model that it actually incorporated the biology of the, uh, of the uh, prey and the predator population as well. So here, uh, this uh, C two Z upon P, this tells us the rate of growth of the predator population, and uh, uh, it, it is limited. This the rate of growth of the predator population is limited, and it causes a decrease in the rate of growth of the predator population as Z increases, which we can see that the squaric term it is in the negative sign. So this was uh, also uh, even now also this model is being used. Now, uh, uh, before going into uh, the another uh, two species model, I would first like to give a little definition about the, uh, the types of predators. So we see that there are two types of predators that are being seen in the ecological system, specialist and the generalist predator. So what is the difference between these two? So a specialist predator basically are uh, those who uh, survive on its favorite food. And in the absence of its favorite food, it dies out. However, in the case of generalist predator, uh, they also survive on their favorite food. But in the case of uh, scarcity of the favorite food, they always switch to other options of the food, and hence they can survive. So once these these predators, they have the two different categories. Now this idea was actually further incorporated in the two species two species model systems. So this was uh, the another uh, uh, basic model that was uh, proposed in 1963 by Rosevich uh, MacArthur. So in this model, uh, it was assumed that the top predator population is your specialist predator. So how it was then modeled here, P is the uh, prey density and Z is the predator density. So we can see that the growth of the prey population, which is P, is actually uh, there is a a negative term here minus b1 p square so that happens because of the uh, intrinsic competition or, uh, of the individuals in, within the prey population and then there is a simple growth a1 p and then minus wz p upon p plus d so this is the predation uh, so w is the rate of uh, rate at which the predator population z eats upon the prey population p so this followed actually following type two function response and hence there was this growth in the predator population using the same function response. And as I said, this is a specialist predator. So we saw that there is a decline in the predator population Z in the absence of its favorite food. And that was the model by minus A to Z. Now, uh, so this was uh, the model where the top predator was specialist. Then another model in the uh, two species uh, ecosystem is given by uh, Hall, uh, Holling Tanner, it's known as Holling Tanner model. And here the top predator is being considered as the generalist predator, which uh, uh, is modeled something like this. So here we can see that the prey population is actually uh, uh, following the logistic growth. And again, this prey population is being predated upon by the predator population using Holling type 2 functional response. And this uh, the growth in the, uh, the population Z, we can see there is a natural raw growth cz and then this is minus w4 z squared by p is uh, the z declining z so this was a, a holling tanner model and it was actually it, it is also very uh, much uh, popular in population dynamics still uh, its modified version is being used now uh, so in general when we see any uh, two species prey predator model so uh, we see that this the first term this is your RP times P, the RP is a density dependent per capita rate of prey growth in the absence of predator. 
So this shows a growth in the prey population. Then f of pz is any functional response that is being used for predating upon the prey population that uh, comes in f of pz into z. And then this uh, growth in the predator population, it more here uh, for modeling this, uh, it's x is uh, assumed as the conversion rate uh, of the prey is being eaten and then hence uh, converted into the predator population. And then again, this functional response fpz would come into play. And then this term minus delta z into z, this uh, describes the per capita decline rate of the predator in the absence of its prey. So in general, when we uh, model a two species model, this is how actually it is. Uh, it is, it takes its form. Okay, now I was here talking about uh, the functional responses. So basically, uh, the function which actually uh, models how the predator population eats upon its prey population, this is your functional uh, response. And actually, they uh, there are various functional responses uh, in the ecology or in the, in the mathematical ecology, which are based on various experiments conducted. And after that, uh, they, this particular form is being given. So some of the basic uh, functional responses that uh, uh, we see in uh, mathematical ecology are shown here. So this is Holling type 1 functional response, which shows a linear growth, alpha p, then Holling type 2 functional response, where uh, we see the growth is of uh, citroid type, then Holling type 3 functional response, where alpha p square upon p square plus a square is formed, and it's a sigmoid curve. Now, Holling type 4, it's uh, alpha p upon p square by i plus p plus a. This is your Holling type 4 function response, is, uh, which is actually, uh, it has another simplified form given by alpha p upon p square plus a square. Then uh, another function response that is being used is uh, ratio dependent type, shown here. Now, uh, some of the other uh, patent dependent function responses are a Hassel Valley function response, Beddington De Angelis function response, the form is shown here. Then uh, Crowley Martin functional response and uh, Evlev type uh, functional response is there uh, based on the different biology. Uh, these are being considered in uh, different uh, mathematical models. Evlev like functional response and then this linear ratio dependent functional response. So, in this particular uh, presentation, uh, where I have uh, considered a mathematical model where uh, uh, group difference is being considered, we have used Evlev like. Uh, non monotonic function response for that purpose. So basically, we have assumed that the prey population has a group difference, and the, for modeling the group difference, we have used Ibrid like non monotonic function response. So these are uh, the uh, fundamental functional responses that are uh, very popularly used in population dynamics, and one should know all of them. And based on your uh, problem, you can actually choose the functional response. Now, uh, so this we have also uh, studied the chaos in the mathematical model that we have proposed. So what actually chaos is? Uh, so chaos is an aperiodic long-term behavior in a deterministic system which exhibits sensitive dependence upon the initial condition. And we need to have uh, the degree more than uh, three or more to have that nonlinear phenomenon in the proposed system, whatever system we are studying. So in three species food food chain model, so when we talk about an ecosystem, we see that, as I said, that we see uh, two or more uh, populations interacting with each other. So there, there were several three species uh, food chain models that we come across. And we also see uh, this uh, phenomenon of chaos in the three species food chain model. So uh, this is a three species food chain model where X is your pre-population, Y is the intermediate predator population, and Z is the top predator population. So here, uh, this particular problem uh, or the model is being studied by Upadhyay and Rai in 1997 initially. And later it was uh, studied by many authors. So this, in this particular model, it, it, it was seen that it, is, uh, it showed uh, chaos in the uh, food chain system. So here, uh, one of the things that was uh, quite uh, noticeable was that the Middle predator was specialist type, and the top predator was the generalist, generalist type predator. So, which I've already explained, uh, the specialist and generalist. So, in this uh, mathematical model, there were uh, chaotic attractors seen, there was a bifurcation, and so on. 
So it actually showed that there were uh, chaos, chaotic dynamics even in the uh, food chain or ecosystem models, ecological models. Now, uh, this was another work where uh, the top predator was considered to be specialist as well, unlike the previous one where the top predator was a generalist type here. So here, both the uh, predators, the middle as well as the top predator, it was considered to be specialist type. And uh, in this case also, a very interesting dynamics was seen as uh, shown here. So initially, there was a stable dynamics there. And uh, with the change in the critical parameter, the dynamics changed to limit cycle and then period doubling. And then finally, the stage factor was seen. So this was uh, some of the uh, basic mathematical models that uh, uh, we come across in the population dynamics and that we use for studying various ecosystems and various e other ecological problems. So now, as I said, in this presentation, uh, we actually focus, we will be focusing on the group defense uh, property of the population. So what is group defense, uh, if I uh, try to define it? So it is a phenomenon uh, the, which describes decreased or prevented predation of the prey due to an increase in the ability of the prey to defend themselves. All right. So whenever uh, you see that uh, there is an increase in the number of prey, they try to protect themselves by either uh, forming a group or trying to have uh, some defensive mechanism by which they can actually win over their predator. So uh, this group, group defense mechanism is seen uh, in uh, some species like wolves, uh, they can successfully attack lone musk ox. So musk ox, they prevent themselves by forming the uh, herds. Similarly, it is also seen in some of the insect populations as well, as, uh, it, uh, as uh, shown by this Holmes, in which uh, he showed that there are several parasites that shows this defense capability to save themselves from their prey. So, uh, so during predation, the predators move to catch the prey, and the prey moves to escape from the predator. Okay, and this also causes spatial variation in the population densities. So, then this is a very interesting, uh, uh, interesting thing to explore: how this effect of group defense actually impacts the distribution of the prey as well as the predator population. So, that that is something that we'll be exploring in this particular work. Also, uh, the patterns that we uh, get for example the spatial distribution that this prey population the predator population form what is the nature of those patterns that also will be investigating whether it is a turing type or it's non turing type and so on so uh, coming to the uh, mathematical model that uh, we are uh, going to study in this so this is uh, a tritrophic food chain model so here uh, u1 is the so this was this is the basic structure or the backbone of the mathematical model that uh, we uh, formulated for our study. So here we can see that u1 is the uh, prey population, u2 is the intermediate predator population, and u3 is the top predator population. And uh, here we can see that growth of the prey population is determined determined by this u1 times g of u1 comma k. So this g of u1 comma k is a uh, function chosen in such a way that uh, this g of 0 k would be positive, g of k k is 0, and g of u1 k would be less than or equal to 0. And this function p of u1, so as I said that uh, this model was uh, originally proposed uh, by Friedman where uh, this group defense was be taken into consideration. So this function p of u1 was uh, chosen to be of non-monotonic function type. So here, uh, what happened was that this P of U1, so once it reaches to a, a certain value, then we see a decline in the uh, population. So that actually uh, uh, very nicely uh, modeled the group defense capability of the population. Now this uh, here minus U2 P of U1 uh, is uh, the decline in the prey population. Here minus uh, du and ut is equal to minus u2 p of u1. So whenever the whenever the predation happens, there is a decline in the population. However, 
it was modeled by p of u1 so it should, this this uh, function was chosen in such a way that the initially there is a growth and then there is a decline in the predation okay and this again here add up to plus u2 c p of u1 so this led to the growth in the intermediate population u2 intermediate predator population u2 and uh, further uh, this du3 dt this is your uh, it's minus nu3 show the decline in the predator population as i said uh, so this is a specialist type so there was a decline in the absence of its favorite food. and then this may, may i raise a question yes yes, uh, yes what is the difference between this uh, uh, intermediate predator and the top predator okay yes yeah, sure. so the intermediate predator is uh, the predator population that eats upon the prey population uh, and uh, and survives on it however the top predator population is the uh, population which eats upon the intermediate predator population and survives on it so that is oh thank you i didn't explain it uh, in the beginning but yeah all right so as i uh, mentioned this p of u1 is a non motoring functional response and there are uh, uh, several functional responses which actually uh, follows this uh, uh, non motoring motor type so we can use them for group defense or in type 4 can be used simplified or type 4 also can be used evlev type and evlev like can be used so in our in our mathematical model we have used evlev like non uh, non motoring functional response to model the group defense in the prey population u1 so as uh, we can see here to explain it little more uh, clearly uh, i'll explain the parameters here involved so this alpha is the grazing rate of the predator okay so the rate at which the predator eats upon the prey and the beta term here which is again a positive quantity that we have considered both alpha and beta are the positive quantity so beta is the reciprocal of the density of the prey at which the predation reaches its maximum and thereafter it starts to decrease which is actually the phenomenon that we see in the group defense so uh, here we can see also from this uh, from this figure so this is uh, we can see that uh, at uh, some particular value there there is an increase in the predation and after that the predation rate decreases so rest of the model i have already explained so in the, the same backbone we get here the uh, this uh, new model system and uh, whatever i'm going to present here is actually uh, published here in this uh, csf so one can see the details there as well so then we studied this particular mathematical model temporal model system uh, with the positive initial condition to see what is the role of this uh, term this group defense term on the nonlinear dynamics of the model system and uh, uh, and whenever we talk about any model system in uh, in nature or in ecology how do you define the various holing type functions okay so yeah so here uh, this uh, i think you're talking about this term right yeah yeah okay so these are holing uh, so this particular predation here we assume to be holing type two functional response based on uh, the uh, the so this is basically holing type 2 functional response is one of the fundamental functional responses that can be used in any of the predator prey model whenever the predator eats upon the prey this is one of the fundamental uh, functional responses that can be assumed to that this function is being used to eat up eat upon its prey now so, what is the definition of holing functions holing type functions holing type functional responses are of actually three type so if we try to understand uh, what is functional response rather that would uh, make it a little more clearer so functional responses are actually the functions which any uh, so whenever a predator eats upon a prey so the the function which it follows the function by which the predator eats upon its prey is known as functional response so based upon several uh, experiments con conducted by the ecologists they came up with the fundamental uh, functional responses and this was given by holling so it was holling type functional response they are actually of uh, four type as i mentioned in the beginning also it's one two three four so this is uh, the holling type two functional response okay i hope uh, yeah maybe uh, hello this is sandeep so maybe the characteristic features of this distinct type of uh, types 
the four uh, or five I, distinct I mean, types right maybe the characters yes, and futures four, how four, the, yes i think that's what four, probably means there are like four different yeah okay sure so here actually uh, so i'll explain this this particular type which is there right here yeah well, i hope uh, uh, that will clear it so here for example hurling type 2 functional response as i mentioned this uh, functional response is there in the literature based on the experiment uh, that ecologists conducted now this hurling type 2 functional response if you want to understand so there is uh, this a plus u2 we can see that this is for example for u2 this is gamma u2 a plus uh, gamma u2 upon a plus u2 so this particular term shows here it also shows that at the rate of gamma this u2 population is being eaten, eaten upon by the uh, population u3 which is a predator for this u2 and it also involves this uh, parameter a which actually includes uh, the or models the hiding capacity of the pre uh, this u2 population from the u3 population so this this is how this hurling uh, type 2 function response is being explained here it means is it is it clear now uh, i think dr sandeep was asking yeah please go ahead all right okay and similarly actually we can uh, explain all these hurling type uh, 4 hurling type 3 function responses and they are being chosen in the system based on the nature of the prey and predator population although hurling type 2 is one of the fundamental uh, functional responses that can be used in any prey and predator population I hope, uh, yes. So, okay. Now, uh, one once we talk about these these uh, populations in an ecosystem, then we talk about its movement as well. And uh, whenever we talk about its uh, its movement in the in a given uh, domain or in a given geographical location uh, for the purpose of search of food or the purpose of uh, uh, search of mates, etc., then we must consider its movement as well. And for that purpose, here we have included the diffusion term so here delta one delta two and delta three are uh, the movement of the prey population the intermediate predator population and the top uh, predator population respectively and uh, we study this uh, spatially extended model or the reaction diffusion model in the presence of positive uh, initial condition and newman boundary condition the newman boundary condition was uh, chosen to uh, make the uh, case simplistic by considering that there is no inflow and outflow from the domain. In inflow uh, or outflow of the population from the domain. So uh, once this uh, model is being uh, formulated, uh, we want to see what are its properties, mathematical uh, properties uh, that we come across. So we check uh, for this equilibrium points. So here uh, we have uh, obtained uh, five equilibrium points where uh, there is extinction of either one or more species is seen. So these are E0, E1, uh, E2. So in E2, uh, here we have E2, E2 not, E2, E2, and E2, E2. So here we see there is an extinction of either one uh, population or more than one population is seen. Then apart from these five equilibrium points, uh, we further saw that there are uh, more equivalent points is uh, seen here. So this is E two not star and E uh, three more. Sorry. So E two not star, E two one star, and E two two star. So these are actually the non-trivial equivalent points which we are interested into because the reason being that uh, uh, dynamics of uh, any ecosystem can be well understood only if only if there is coexistence of all the three populations or all the populations involved in the ecosystem, if possible. So uh, for understanding the uh, behavior of this uh, particular <clears throat> mathematical model at these equivalent points, we obtain its uh, Jacobian as uh, shown here. And uh, so the Jacobian matrix, uh, we obtain its value at uh, these points, equivalent points. And uh, we check the nature of the or the stability of these equivalent points. So the first equivalent point was a saddle point. The second equivalent point, E1, it was locally asymptotically stable given uh, this condition is satisfied and is saddled if it is violated. Similarly, we checked uh, the stability of the other equilibrium points. And uh, as I mentioned, we're, uh, the, the most interesting one that uh, where we 
we we have our valuable interest are the non trivial points so let us move to the non trivial equivalent points so the non trivial equivalent points and uh, that we obtained here e to not star so this equivalent point e to, e to not star it was unstable e to one star also was found unstable and the third equivalent point the non trivial equivalent point e to two star it was uh, stable under a certain set of conditions being satisfied so we move forward to this move forward with this non trivial equivalent point e to two star so uh, for our uh, numerical simulations we uh, yeah, we took into consideration this equivalent point and around this equivalent point only we did our numerical simulations now uh, we also uh, analytically we also checked uh, the bifurcations uh, present in the mathematical model and uh, we uh, saw that uh, there was uh, there was transcriptal bifurcation about the bifurcation parameter alpha and star so the model undergoes uh, transcriptal bifurcation around uh, the free equivalent point e1 when the conversion coefficient alpha 1 which is our bifurcation parameter it passes through a critical value given by d1 e to the power beta k upon k with the condition k of beta not equal to 1 similarly uh, the system undergoes hog bifurcation uh, uh, around the positive equilibrium point e to 2 star the non trivial equilibrium point if these two uh, conditions hold as shown here now uh, so this we checked analytically further uh, we went uh, to we uh, went to see whether uh, we can actually verify these bifurcations numerically so uh, what we saw was that uh, we we could see hog bifurcation numerically as we can see from here so at this point h1 the hog bifurcation occurred and uh, we can see that there is an oscillatory dynamics also seen at the k star equal to 8.803 now uh, here uh, we checked and uh, we we saw that there is a transcriptal bifurcation as shown mathematically as well at the point t1 this uh, transcriptal bifurcation was seen we also observed this saddle node bifurcation as well uh, here at this point uh, apart from this actually we have also seen a uh, few more bifurcations of four dimension 2 uh, which is uh, which can be seen in the in that article which is not uh, presented here now uh, in order to understand the behavior of the system over a longer period of time it is important to see uh, or or check the persistence uh, and the permanence of the given ecosystem or given model system so for that purpose we checked uh, the persistence and permanence of the model system so if you uh, want to uh, go in little more detail so we saw that all the solutions of the model system which started in archi plus Where uniformly bounded, and the domain is uh, is presented here, where we saw that. So, uh, whenever we say that a system is permanent, uh, that this means the system has uh, it is dissipated, and it is uniformly persistent. Both the uh, properties together makes a system permanent. So, this uh, theorem four actually uh, gives the conditions when the when our model system. So here, I'm, here I'm talking about the temporal model system, uh, model system sixteen. So this model system, it was uh, it is uniformly persistent whenever this condition r eta one is greater than d one eta two plus d two eta three, and this eta two is greater than this quantity, as well as this third condition. So all these three three inequalities, if they are satisfied. The system is uniformly persistent. Man, what are these parameters? Eta one, eta two. So uh, eta one, eta two are actually the uh, we have given it in the in the proof. So we have assumed basically uh, the set of uh, terms we have assumed it to eta one and eta two. So simplified form. So I can, if you are interested, I can show you in the paper as well. So I'm not going to do the proof. That's why it's it's not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, then we obtained a, a set of uh, conditions for the, uh, Turing instability. So basically, what we did here is that I'll just uh, explain here in a little bit uh, the method that we uh, we followed or the approach that we followed to obtain this theorem. That might make things a little bit more clearer. Uh, 
so here what we did was that uh, we have the root risk criteria. So, uh, so whenever when when do we see the Turing instability? What actually is Turing instability? So the diffusion-driven uh, instability that we see in any mathematical model is your Turing instability. And uh, for that, uh, what the method we have followed for opening this uh, theorem is that uh, we have checked the root risk criteria. So root risk criteria needs to be satisfied at uh, first node, and that's k equals to zero. And at the higher nodes, the any if any of the uh, conditions for the root risk criteria is violated, then we see Turing instability. So following that uh, method or that proof, we obtain. Uh, these conditions for Turing instability, for which uh, yeah, we got the Turing patterns. And uh, further, uh, we we uh, we check the Hopf bifurcation. So we uh, try to see the Hopf. So earlier, this Hopf bifurcation that we saw, it was in the temporal model system, and then for the special temporal case. That is when they, when we are considering the movement of the population as well in the model system. So in that case, we have uh, checked, we have tried to see the Hopf bifurcation in the mathematical model. And as it can be seen from these figures, uh, the surface plots uh, were seen. And uh, whenever this parameter beta, so what is this parameter uh, beta? This is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this is the reciprocal of the prey density at which the, uh, the population which is maximum. So here, this basically it depends the group depends. So when this beta is 0 0.02, there was stable dynamics. And uh, when this beta crossed its threshold and it reached, reached at 0 0.05, there was an oscillatory dynamics was C. So it, uh, uh, there was a half vibration in the spatial temporal mathematical model. Now, uh, with uh, at this equilibrium point E22 star that I mentioned earlier, at that equilibrium point, uh, we uh, try to see the uh, dynamics of uh, the temporal model system as well as the spatial extended model system. So this first figure actually uh, shows the dynamics of model 16, that is the temporal model system. So here uh, uh, we see that this parameter beta, uh, as I mentioned earlier also, it's a parameter with the group defense. So this, as this parameter beta is varied, uh, so, for example, for example, at beta equal to 0 0.04, we saw that there is a stable focus dynamics is there. And as we increase this beta from 0 0.04 slightly to 0 0.045, limit cycle was seen. And then further, by increasing it to 0 0.08, period doubling was seen. And, uh, and further increase it to 0 0.11, there, a, there was a KOT attractor that was strange KOT attractor that was seen in the, uh, in the model system. So, so this actually uh, shows how sensitive this parameter is, which uh, shows an effect of group difference. Now, uh, we also uh, observed that at beta equal to 0 0.15, there was an extinction of uh, the predator population. So this actually hinted to the fact that even this uh, group difference at some point, it can even lead to extinction of the predator populations. Now, uh, we tried to explore further the uh, the chaotic dynamics or the nonlinear dynamics in the model system. So for that purpose, we obtained the uh, time series uh, uh, for this uh, mathematical model at the point where we obtain the chaotic attractor. There's a time series plot and there's a strange chaotic attractor obtained at these uh, parameter values. Now at the same parameter values, we uh, use the same parameter value with the diffusion and uh, we check the uh, behavior of the special temporal model system or the reaction diffusion system. So uh, what we observed here was that even in the case of a uh, specially extended model system, uh, there was a very rich dynamics C. So initially at t equal to 500, the system showed uh, stable dynamics. And uh, at t equal to 1000, the uh, dynamics begin to, uh, the chaotic dynamics begin to appear. And at t equal to 1500, we can see that the entire uh, domain was occupied by irregular uh, dynamics and here the strange chaotic attractor also C. Further, we confirmed this, uh, uh, the chaos in the model system using the Lyapunov exponent, exponent, which we have not presented here, although it's there in the paper that I cited in the beginning. 
Now, uh, uh, so next uh, in the spe spatiotemporal case, the spatiotemporal patterns, uh, we have uh, tried to see uh, the behavior of, of the mathematical model in the case of spatially extended system. And we observed that there is a set of a very rich uh, patterns that we, we saw in which included actually non-Turing as well as Turing pattern. And the parameter value that we use here uh, for this simulation is presented in this table. So here, all the parameter values were fixed at this, uh, this uh, values that is given here. And the diffusivity coefficient or the movement of the prey population is presented in this column, delta 1. This is the movement of the intermediate predator population, delta 2. So this is uh, in this particular column. And delta 3 is actually uh, showing the movement of the top predator population. And beta is the term that represents the group difference. So uh, here we conducted, first we conducted three experiments where we kept the movement of the prey population constant. And the initial uh, conditions that we used for this simulation is uh, mentioned here. So uh, this, this is the initial condition that we have used for the uh, for, find, for getting the spatial temporal patterns. And this initial condition is being used for the Turing pattern. And that's how the parameters are being fixed as shown here. So as I mentioned, in the first three experiments, we kept the movement of the prey population constant. So here, uh, this delta 1, which is the moment of the prey population was kept fixed at uh, one value one and in the second figure as well it was fixed to delta one equal to one so what we saw here uh, at this uh, given set of uh, investigate the patterns in the system so what we saw here was that uh, the system explore uh, the system exhibited a very rich uh, pattern dynamics as uh, it can be seen here. So as we change the time, uh, we see that this uh, these uh, patterns actually changes. So at t equal to 500, 500 we can see this whole uh, this cold uh, hot hot spots here in the prey population and the top rate population. And as the time changes from 500 to 1000, these cold spots begin to disappear. And here the uh, the hot spots begin to disappear here the cold spots are being seen and here also uh, we can see that the distribution around these uh, cold spots are changing and uh, finally uh, we can see at the end at t equal to 15000 uh, these uh, patterns pattern dist the distribution of these uh, populations has completely changed into hot and cold spots so uh, similarly in this case so delta 1 was kept fixed in the second case and this delta 2, that is movement of the uh, middle predator, it was also kept fixed. And delta 3, the movement of the top predator, this was uh, increased. So initially it was taking 0.01, here it was increased to 0.1. And then we tried to see, is there any change in the spatial distribution of these populations? So just by changing the uh, movement of the top predator, uh, we could see some change in the uh, distribution of these prey population middle predator and the top predator population. And this also changed over time, as we can see. First figure is for t equal to 500. Second is for t equal to 1,000. Third one is uh, the simulation is carried out for 3,000 runs. And the last one is for 2,000 runs. So here, uh, with time also, it was changing. So uh, this was uh, the non-Turing patterns that we saw for our model system. And uh, this non-Turing pa pattern, based on the fact that these uh, did not satisfy the conditions that we obtained for the Turing instability. Further, the third experiment, as I mentioned, we conducted. Here also, we kept uh, the movement of the prey and the middle predator fixed. So here, delta 1 is 1, delta 2 is 0 0.01, and uh, delta 3, it was it is, it is changed to 0 0.01. And uh, the rest of the parameter remained same. So we saw that, again, uh, there is significant change in the distribution of the prey population, the middle predator population, and the top predator population. So basically, a third column represents the uh, distribution of the top predator population in space. The second column uh, denotes the distribution of the middle predator population. And this is the first column is the prey population distribution. So what we saw here is that 
Here also, initially, uh, started to appear the cold spots in all the uh, three, all the the first and second population, and uh, eventually it changed, and the labyrinth type of pattern was seen in all the three population. And of course, uh, it was mathematically confirmed that these are non d patterns. Now, in the uh, fourth experiment, a numerical experiment, we uh, changed the movement of all the three uh, populations. Uh, so delta 1 was changed to 0 0.1, delta 2 was zero, changed to 0 0.0001, and delta 3 was equal to 1. So basically, the middle predictor was considered to be very less active among all the three populations. And it was seen that uh, then also there was significant change in the distribution of the population, and uh, uh, this type of uh, non turing pattern was seen as shown here. So this actually showed that uh, the uh, the pattern has the pattern formation has a significant uh, it, it is significantly influenced by the uh, movement of the uh, tree populations, and also it uh, it's, it displayed a very rich. Uh, set of uh, patterns among the three populations. Now, uh, this, uh, these uh, four experiments, which we have connected here, so all the parameter values satisfied the conditions for Turing instability, which means uh, the instability is being triggered by the diffusion in the mathematical model. So here we saw that uh, there is a ripple uh, type a Turing pattern seen in one dimensional. So the, the first uh, two experiments are conducted in one dimensional spatial domain. And uh, the other two experiments were in the two dimensional spatial domain, which is the most realistic case. So here uh, we saw that uh, this ripple type Turing pattern was seen in one dimensional uh, domain. And the parameter values uh, which was used for uh, the simulation it was fixed as given table two. However, the diffusivity coefficients were changed as shown here. And this run was carried out for 20,000 runs. Now, uh, is, it, yes. is there any no need for the time? Yes, there is a movie. I uh, I can no, show no, it. Time. Uh, is there any unit? Hours or minutes or something? T, time. T, yes, 2000, yes. What is the unit you are following? Okay, you're talking about the unit. All right. So uh, here we have uh, uh, we have not mentioned the unit here because we have non-dimensionalized the model system. Okay. So yeah, so all the uh, parameters that we have used are dimensionless. So that's why. Okay, dimensionless. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, now the the actually I want wanted to also show how these uh, movies are evolving uh, with uh, time. So this here, for example, this, how these patterns are growing with time and how it is changing. So maybe I can show it at the end of the uh, end of the presentation, because right now I have, I have not shared the whole screen. I shared the entire screen, so it's not working. Okay. So uh, the other two experiments. Uh, so uh, what we did was that we changed uh, the we increased the movement of the tree population uh, significantly, and uh, we uh, uh, we left it delta two and delta three almost. Uh, very less, comparatively less, and we saw that uh, there were interesting um, Turing patterns seen in uh, this uh, figure, uh, both the figures. So uh, this actually is a prior stage of the Turing pattern. Uh, so t equal to 2000 is the previous stage that we have captured here, just to show how it is evolving. However, this is the final Turing pattern that we saw, we saw here, this B figure. And uh, similarly, here in the last figure as well. So yeah, so what we actually observed here is that group defense has a very significant role to play on not only just the pattern formation, but also it, it affects the, uh, the bifurcation in the system. Uh, and it's a very critical parameter, as well as it is affecting the, uh, the non-inner damage of the system. So yeah, and uh, so this uh, effect of this group defense has been uh, on the pattern formation has been reported for the first time in the literature and it's quite interesting as well as it uh, shows a very rich uh, set of uh, patterns which involves both Turing as well as non Turing. And also we have seen that this uh, group defense ability of the prey, it can even lead to extinction of the middle as well as the top rated population. So yeah, and we have of course, as I mentioned, we have seen a very wide range of uh, bifurcations in this model system. Uh, as uh, I, I 
uh, showed earlier, it fits into a transcortical sad nodal of bifurcation in codimension one, and which I have then shown uh, in codimension two was Bogdanov taken uh, bifurcation as well as a generalized hop bifurcation. So, yeah, so that, that is all. Of course, there exists hop bifurcation in both the cases in the temporal uh, model as well as in the spatial temporal model, as it was validated using the numerical uh, simulation. So, yeah. So uh, these are the references, uh, uh, some of the references that we have used. And uh, that's all. So, thank you. Before moving to the questions, you want to show the movies? Or? I can show, yes. Uh, yeah, I would, I would show the movies. Yeah, so uh, yeah, this is actually interesting to see how uh, these patterns are growing in time and how they are evolving and changing at uh, every simulation. So I would like to show it here. So for, for example, for the first one, so this is how it changes. So we can see that. And so this is for the pre-population. So as we can see, the T uh, changes or increases then these patterns are evolving into first we can see at times are cold spots and then there are cold hot spots basically by hot spot and cold spot i mean uh, the hot spot means there are higher uh, density concentrated at the center and the cold spots are the low density of uh, low population density uh, considered at the center so we can see that uh, these are alternating and these patterns are evolving with time and uh, it's t equal to 2000 what we get is different than what we'll be getting at t equal to 5000 entirely different so we can also see that there is a huge change in the uh, scale of the population what is what is existing here it is also changing and finally we reach to the, the last pattern that we saw in that picture so this was uh, one of the uh, non-Turing patterns we saw. And similarly, I'd like to show you one Turing pattern that, uh, so here, so for example, so yeah, so we actually started at, um, at the same uh, point. We had the similar pattern here as well. But this being the uh, Turing type, you will see that eventually it fixes to one particular pattern and it doesn't change further. So I thought it's changing and eventually it will fix to the labyrinth type pattern and it will not change further. So that was uh, quite interesting to see. Yeah. And it reached to 5,000, and then that's it. So, yeah. So, that is, yeah, that is all. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You can ask. It's open for now, questions. Now, the session is open for questions, clarifications, doubts. Yeah, hi. This is Sandil here. So, need to. Yeah, hi. Dr. Yes. Aiko? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. you you so you have observed chaotic dynamics in certain parameter space, right? Yes. Yes. So what is the significance of such chaotic dynamics from population perspective? Okay. So I can. Uh, uh, should I give some examples or uh, what are you? Looking? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. So for example, uh, uh, if you talk about the plankton population, phytoplankton and zooplankton population. 
So there has been uh, atmospheric sci scientists who are trying to investigate what is the reason behind. So there we actually see the role of chaos there because we, we also see the algal blooms uh, very frequently in the phytoplankton population. So that actually explains uh, or, or the the science behind it is the, the chaotic dynamics that can actually explain those blooms that we see. So that can be an okay. example. In prey predator dynamics, if it happens, then how, what is yes. this meaning? Uh, because yeah. we uh, understand that it's persistent or existence, right? That is, those are the two states normally. So when mm -hmm. uh, they are synchronized, probably I think people say that it is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, I, what is it? But if, if they are in steady states, probably then people call it as a persistent state, right? Or if they get synchronized, they are uh, about to uh, extinct. Uh, but what 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 uh, so what this chaotic state says about this population dynamics? Okay, so uh, for example, I was uh, yeah, specifically in prey predator dynamics. Yes, dynamics. yes, yes, yes. So uh, so one of the best examples to understand that is again I would go to the phytoplankton, zooplankton, and fish. So for example, if you consider this uh, uh, food chain of phytoplankton, zooplankton, and fish population. So there also uh, what happens whenever there is a queue. So when when there is a bloom, algal bloom is there basically. So then uh, that bloom is actually the hidden uh, mathematics or the hidden physics by which we can explain that bloom is actually, as I mentioned, it's a chaos or the chaotic dynamics. And that affects the uh, the predation of the fish as well and uh, the growth of, uh, of the, uh, the phytoplankton and zooplankton as well. So, yeah, so 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 that is, that is what. We can actually understand uh, the... You know, through the chaos, we can understand the predation as well. For example, in the case of, I can, if you want, I can explain that. That's okay. Yes, okay. And I'm sure how sensitive uh, the states are depending on initial conditions, because usually in prey predator dynamics, so they the stay observed states are extremely sensitive to initial conditions, right? Depending yes, on initial conditions. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, how, so what I, what was your question? Does it depend or? How does it depend? It depends on initial conditions, right? The states, observed in dynamic states. Yes, yes, yes. It depends on initial condition. Yes. That's the reason the initial condition that we have chosen, we have added, uh, uh, we have done a perturbation of very, very small term with epsilon 10 to the power minus something. So, yes, it does affect. So, we have to. Uh, so how, do you, yeah, how do you find this in those initial conditions? Is there any mechanism for it? or? Uh, yep. So, we actually start with literature because um, uh, we can't conduct experiments and also of course we start with literature and then we make sure that uh, uh, those initial conditions uh, are not very uh, disturbing like uh, you know they're they're small in, i would say they are very very small in nature that and we choose it uh, the, the form of the initial condition we choose it from literature and many times we change it based on the uh, experiments that we conduct Okay, so then you observe various bifurcations, right? So, what yes. are the significance in terms of again population dynamics or predator interactions? So, actually, yeah. So, the uh, for example, if we say that we have obtained um, a hot bifurcation at uh, uh, the critical parameter k star equal to some value, so in that case, uh, we know that uh, the moment we reach to that, so this is more for the experimentalist. To, uh, to to uh, use it, but we know that when we change the, we reach to the va particular value of the uh, k, then uh, we are sure to see some significant change in the dynamics of both the populations, right? So that uh, actually gives us uh, a quick heads up that okay, fine, at k star equal to this value, if you change it, if you shift, you go a little further or a little go down, then there will be change in dynamics. That's how you know. it is. Even population dynamics also that's how it is used. Okay, yeah, it's time, Dr. Milton. Yeah. So, by the way, it's a nice talk. I forgot to mention it in the beginning. It's a nice talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam, there is a question in the chat box. Can you read it? Uh, let me read it. Uh, okay, so yes, sure. Yeah, Prashant. Uh, so, the, he is asking the presence of limit cycle in the population dynamics mean mean population of means i think he means means population of prey or predator or both remains constant 
Well, uh, no, uh, Prashant, it does not remain constant. It remains oscillatory. Okay, it remains oscillatory, both prey and predator population. Okay, uh, does that make sense to you, Prashant? Prashant. Yeah, is is it clear now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm audible. Ma yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, oscillatory with uh, some particular kind of amplitude. So what uh, amplitude uh, physically refers there? Are uh, you talking about the Lopka vulture? Where, which uh, slide you're talking about? Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, you told that uh, presence of limit cycle in the population dynamics there. So uh, it would have some oscillatory behavior. So uh, I could not find kind uh, what kind of oscillatory behavior uh, in the population dynamics. And if we go to the period doubling case, uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, how uh, how I could understand the physically, uh, like, okay. uh, like what kind oh, of oscillation is going on there? I'll, I'll, okay, I'll explain it to you. Yes, yes, ma'am. So, okay, so when we talk about uh, uh, the lim any limit cycle, so it actually means that the uh, dynamics is oscillatory nature. Okay, so this means it is uh, it is always it it is maintaining a particular amplitude and it, uh, it is always remaining there okay although it's, it's not constant we can't can't call it constant now when we talk about you're asking about now the period doubling what does that mean you're talking about right so we, if we want to understand it physically so the physical interpretation would be that its amplitude is uh, so it still remains oscillatory however its, its amplitude shifted uh, shifts from one uh, uh, particular value say k1 and uh, it oscillates there for some time and then again it moves to some uh, other at, at some other point of amplitude, for example, uh, K2, and there it oscillates for some time, and it, it remains there. So that is how we can uh, physically actually understand. So it's the uh, prey and predator population, both of, both of them stays at some value for some time, then goes at some other value and stays there for some time. Does it Ampli any... Amplitude correspond to the population? No, 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 no. Uh, see uh, amplitude corresponds to the number of individuals in the population not is it is it okay number of individuals in the population is the amplitude number of individual in in a particular uh, yeah, in, yeah. in particular species yes amplitude has the exact same meaning as it remains in any other uh, in the physics as well same thing the maximum number of uh, number of okay individuals. thank you thank okay. you uh, madam, there is also another question from Bakachi. Bakachi. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Can you raise your questions, please, Bakachi? You already raised, but I am not seeing this question in the chat box. I. It's not audible, I believe. Uh, I can't hear her. Yeah. He raised his hands, but. Uh, Yeah, Bakshi, I can't hear you. Can you be a little louder and ask a question? Or you can write your question in the chat box. There is some noise at you, and it's better if you write it there, and I can answer it for you. Yeah, uh, we, we, this was, can we write your question? No. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, if anyone else has any other question, feel free to ask. So questions from others? Yeah, the question has come. OK, so is a group defense phenomenon governed by a single parameter or a group of parameters in the dynamics? So uh, I'll talk about the, uh, because group defense can be modeled uh, in a different ways, several different ways. So let me talk about my case. So in my case, the group defense phenomenon actually is governed by more than one parameter. OK. And uh, to be more precise, uh, by alpha and beta, both. 
a grazing term as well as I think I have answered your okay great thanks thanks Is there yeah. any other question from students yeah uh, I'm not getting any questions now uh, so in that case uh, let us conclude the session so so I would like to conclude the session by thanking Professor Nitya Kumari for accepting our invitation and delivering a very wonderful talk. Your talk is very interesting one, madam. You introduced mm -hmm. several models uh, from the basic level to current work. Okay. Uh, we understand a lot in mathematical biology. At least, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Antivalan. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, yeah I, did, I actually enjoyed ask, uh, answering the questions of the students. So, yeah. Thank you.